Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava and here are my top 10 romances of 2023. A few days ago, I did come out with my monster alien paranormal romances, my top 10 of those. So those will, that video will be linked down below for you to go check out. Those will not be in this video specifically. I separate them because I would just be talking about so many books and I know that I have certain types of audiences on my channel and I know some don't care about the contemporary or historicals and then some don't care about the sci-fi alien ones so that's why I separate them. Anyway so these are my top 10 reads of 2023. These are my contemporary books and there are also I think there's one historical that made the list as well. So um, 2024 I'm definitely going to be reading more historicals so I'm hoping more historicals will make it onto this list or maybe I'll have a whole like historical video. That'd be so fun. Um, but yeah, that's one of my goals for next year is to read more historicals because I love them a lot. There's no particular order. I'm just listing them off. I do have a singular favorite, which if you know me and my channel, you know what it's going to be, but I don't have like a countdown or saying or a ranking or whatever the case may be. These are just my top 10 favorite books of 2023. First one that I have... <laughs> Heartless by Elsie Silver. This was on a lot of people's favorites of last year. I know this book came out in 2022, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it did come out in 2022. So this was on a lot of my friends' favorites for 2022, but I did not read Elsie Silver until this year. I read the first three books in the Chestnut Spring series, and I read the first book in her like Off to the Races series. So I know I need to continue. Okay, the next one I have to read is Reckless, and I know that's like a fan. Okay, anyway, so this is about Willa and Cade. Um, we met uh, them briefly in book one in this series. Um, and Willa becomes Cade's nanny for his son. Um, he works on a ranch and he's needing a nanny for a little while. And Willa comes in, swooping in and helping him take care of his kid. This is a great nanny romance. I love nanny romances. Nanny romance is probably my favorite trope. Like I just love it so much. And this book is like the creme de la creme of nanny romances to me. I don't really know what else to say about this book that none that no one else has said. It's great grumpy sunshine. Like it's so good. Like I don't I don't really know what else to say. It's really good. Read it please. My first book of the year this year was a five star and it's on this list. This is Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. I was very hesitant to pick up this book. This cover is not my favorite. It's just not personally. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I love so many of Helena Hunting's books, but the ones with like the cartoon covers, I don't know why they are not my type of cartoon cover. And so I wasn't really into it, but I was like, why the heck not? I have the audio on Libby. I want to read a book from, his, from my physical shelf. And I did, and it was amazing. It was so stinking fun. So I hear in the heroine, they have businesses right next door to each other. The heroine has a cocktail cupcake bar and the hero inherited his father's sports bar next door to hers and is like fixing it up to add like axe throwing and uh, more like televisions and like fun stuff like that. Um, and the heroine and the hero do not get off on the right foot. They have like the same like opening day. The heroine thinks that he's stealing her customers away and like I think like one of the last final straws um, before she confronts him is they're like putting in the axe throwing stuff and like practicing with it and the wall where the like the target is where the axes like get launched into you know um is right against one of her walls where some beautiful cocktail glasses are and they end up breaking and she like comes over there to confront him and that kind of like sparks their business rivalry prank situation <laughs> it is so stinking fun the hero in here he's like all like puts off like all the broody gruff vibes but like he's secretly smiling inside that he's making this woman so angry like he loves it he thrives off of it he goes into her cupcake shop like every single day to make fun and like poke at her like not in a bad way not in a mean way you know me i don't care for men who are mean like no like you're on my no no list if you're mean no like he's like bantering with her he's so funny and <laughs> like she gives back what he like gives, like, you know what I mean? Like their energies are like the same like that. And anyway, he goes into her shop, like basically every single day to get a cupcake because they're the best things he's ever tasted in like his entire life. And he cannot help himself. He's like, I don't want to help this woman have amazing business because we're rivaling, but like, I need one of her cupcakes because <laughs> it's so good. So I love this romance a lot so stinking much and i need more people to read it i feel like it's so underrated my one historical mm, i don't know if it's like in my second place spot i don't know this is why i don't really rank 
favorite books of the year because it's too hard my brain will explode I'm not doing that so um I'll just talk about Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott this book is so good I've read a few Scott Scott books before this I've read a few Scott Scott books this year specifically and I saw when I had an audible account I had to pause my account for a little bit to save up some money um but when I did have my audible account I saw that this one was on audible plus and it was the first book in a series I think the whole series was on there at the time I don't know if it's still on there you can go look now if you have an audible account this might be on audible plus so if you have an audible subscription you can listen to this book for free um that's what happened when I had audible so don't take my word on that because I don't know if that's still happening right now because sometimes book gets books get taken on and off audible plus anyway so I was absolutely sucked into this book apparently this is like a spinoff series to a series that I've already read by Scott Scott and another one that I haven't read but she does such an amazing job with her series like where they're lightly very lightly connected but like it doesn't matter it like doesn't matter at all because I was not really lost whatsoever reading this so Lady Calliope of this story is in a little bit of a pickle. She starts out with this book getting kidnapped by the hero. It starts out with her in a carriage getting drugged by him. <laughs> um, so Lord Sin, our hero in this book, is having a really hard time, okay? There are these pamphlets and letters and articles written about him, like they're written in first person. And it talks about all the horrible, scandalous things he's done, like murdered people and like slept with husbands wives and like horrible things like that and he's like i've done those things like who is writing this like and everyone thinks that he's done these things and he's like i'm not writing these i haven't done these things like what is going on he finds out who has been writing it and he is pissed because um because of the things that have like come out about him in these like pamphlets and articles and letters or whatever the case may be his reputation is like ruined and no good standing woman will marry him and he needs he needs a wife he needs one for his title to continue his lineage like he needs a wife and so he finds out that lady calliope has been writing these horrible articles and he needs revenge so he ends up kidnapping her and taking her to one of his estates in the middle of nowhere and is like I'm chaining you to this bed, chaining you to this room, like locking you in this room, chaining you to the bed, making sure you don't run away. And you're not gonna leave here until you agree to be my wife. Because number one, you ruined my life. You've ruined my chances at a wife. And to make up for it, you're just gonna be my wife because no one else will marry me. <laughs> the heroine of the story is absolutely terrified of Lord Sin because of certain things that have happened, things that she thinks that he has done to her and her family. And it's all I'm gonna leave you with. It is so good. Like Scott Scott's writing is so immersive. Her audiobooks are fantastic. They're so good. I love this book so much. I need more people to read it. If you have not read the Scott Scott book yet, like you need to, and you might be spoiled with this book because this is my favorite one that she's written for sure. The Butterfly Project by Emma Scott is my next one. I got to meet Emma Scott this year. It was absolutely beautiful. Look, she signed it. I love, I love her so much. I read a few Emma Scott books this year, but this one is definitely my favorite from her. It's just like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, I know that angsty romances are all the rage right now. They are. Like, don't get me wrong. I love a good angsty romance, okay? But sometimes there's beauty in reading about the simplicity of love and how simple love can be sometimes and how unangsty it can be at times. And this book is like the perfect representation of that, of just watching love blossom in like a pure and mature way. Like I love it so much. Okay, so I heard in here is Zelda. She is in New York for the time being. She writes graphic novels, has this graphic novel. She really wants to propose to publishers and like get out in the world, you know? She ends up going to an Italian restaurant one night. She's kind of like struggling with her living situation. She ends up meeting one of the servers there and they end up just talking at the back of the restaurant and um he kind of like lets it slip like oh yeah i'm kind of struggling right now too i'm a few hundred bucks short on rent so i'm gonna have to like sell some things and she's like wait a minute you live in like a pretty safe area and like your house or apartment seems pretty secure like how about i pay you the difference and like i can pay help you pay rent for the next few months if you let me stay with you and i can work on my graphic novel and so they end up becoming roommates very forced proximity in a shoebox of an apartment like literally shoebox of an apartment and they end up at one point having to share the bed too because the air mattress pops <laughs> so it is so beautiful it is so beautiful i love this book a lot emma scott knows how to write like a beautiful romance Kaliza is definitely on this list like 
do you not know me? So this is the newest book in the Burger Mother series. This is the romance between Ziggy and Sebastian. And it has wonderful representation in here as well. But I'll get into that in a second. But this book is a fake friends romance. So Ziggy in here is the baby of the Bergman family. And she kind of wants to be taken more seriously in the media. She is a professional soccer player. He, Sebastian, is a professional hockey player. He is actually on her brother's hockey team. So that's how they know each other. Um, and she knows Sebastian's kind of like the bad boy of the team. And she kind of like wants to roughen up her image a little bit. She doesn't want to be a goody two shoes. And so she proposes a fake friendship to Sebastian. Like, can we just like go out places, like pretend to be friends, hang out in like the public eye. And so they start up a fake friendship that turns kind of like into a fake relationship and then turns into something more. Like it is so beautiful seeing the, the progression of like not friends to friends to lovers. Like I love that so much. I'm a friends to lovers girly. I love that. Um, there's fantastic representation here. Sebastian um, is, through getting through the diagnosis of being diagnosed with celiac, which is what I have. I have celiac, so I really enjoy that representation. It's own voices as well, because Chloe has celiac disease. Also, we really connect over our celiac disease struggles, me and Chloe. Um, and then Ziggy in here is autistic, so there's that representation as well. I just loved all the representation. I love the sport aspect as well, because you rarely see sports romances where both characters are professional athletes like it's so cool like I loved that aspect of the book and I need more in my life I read this book with Brie over at Lemon Words for our chronically courageous book club also look out for that we're going to be starting our book club back up in 2024 so excited we took a little bit of a break um but we're going to be starting it back up again where we read uh disabled chronically ill and neurodivergent characters finding like the love of their life I love it so much. So we read this book for our chronically, chronically courageous book club. Sorry, that sometimes is a tongue twister for me. <laughs> anyway, um, so it was so great discussing this with her and we got to like talk to Chloe a little bit about it. Like ugh, beautiful book. I really enjoyed this. I can't wait for the last Burgby Brother book to come out next year. I'm so excited. This next one needs no introduction. This is Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. This one is my favorite book of the year. I love it. I love Hannah. I love her writing. I've read all of her books now. I read this as an arc and I've actually read it twice this year um, because the audiobook came out later this year. So I read it twice. I love it. Favorite book of the year is about Bo and Wynn. They end up meeting at a Halloween party. They have friends that are like acquaintances and they so they end up at the same Halloween party. They kind of have like the same costume going on. They're both dressed up as pirates. Anyway, they're fantastic at night together on Halloween night, but then Wynn ends up finding out she's pregnant. And then Bo offers for her to move in with him because she kind of lives in like a sketchy area that has no elevator and she lives on like the sixth floor. He's like, you cannot live there when you get like, when you're like heavily pregnant. Like, are you joking? No. Um, and so she ends up moving in with him. And um, it's like they have this like one fantastic night together when they first meet, um, but then it becomes friends to lovers in a sense. Even with that fantastic night together, it's still friends to lovers romance. And you get to experience the pregnancy with Wynn and everything like that. And like watching their relationship develop slowly, which was beautiful to read about. I also really appreciated the disability representation in here. There are so many things I absolutely love about this book that made me sob and the disability representation was probably like the main thing. Um, I have experienced a lot of inner questioning like Wynn has being a disabled person and wanting children. Like, are you enough? Are you gonna be able to take care of them in the way that they need to be taken care of? Will your child have the best life possible with having a disabled parent? Like, what is that gonna look like? Are you worthy enough? to do that. Like those are the thoughts that go through my mind, that go through other people's minds that have disabilities or chronic illnesses and they go through Wynn's mind. So I really related to her. She was born with a limb difference. You can see on the cover, um, which is own voices. Hannah Bottom Young also has a limb difference. And um, our here and here beau is an amputee. Um, he lost his leg due to cancer. And this is just their beautiful, sweepingly romantic, beautiful friends to lovers romance with a surprise pregnancy trope. And this book totally changed my mind, like totally shifted my gaze with surprise pregnancy romances. And I just wanna read all of them now. That book is absolutely beautiful, fantastic. I will die on a hill that that book is everything to me. Um, but I could not help but also talk about Next to You by Hannah Bottom Young. <laughs> I love this one as well. This is her second book in the Next series. Um, and this one is about Lane and Matt, another friend to lovers romance. So Lane and Matt end up meeting at a New Year's Eve party. They become close friends um, and they have not stopped being friends ever since then, even though both of them have slowly pined for each other, but they don't really wanna cross that line and make the other person uncomfortable or anything. Um, and Lane also has anxiety that I really related to, like so hardcore. There's one scene in here that I was literally like 
sobbing because I related to her so much of like her being in the friend in the car with her friends and like feeling like a burden and like her anxiety mind is just spiraling out of control and I'm like oh my gosh has Hannah Bonham Young like been inside my brain <laughs> I love that woman so much like she's like my new favorite author of all time like I love her so stinking much okay anyway I could talk about Hannah all day long Elaine impulsively one night ends up buying a school bus and wants to fix it up to become like a mobile home to like live in and travel around it and Matt and his uh friend um actually own a auto body shop I think like a mechanic store whatever mechanic shop <laughs> can you tell I know nothing about cars anyway it's a mechanic shop <laughs> and um he's agreed to help Lane fix up this bus to make it livable and that's kind of like their forced proximity situation of them having to spend more time together to fix up this bus and it's so so cute I love this one so much the representation here fantastic it's so relatable and I, I I'm a sucker for friends to lovers. I also read all the books that are currently out in the Love Light series by BK Borison. I read them all within like two months. They're so good. I get why people are rec were recommending them all the time. I have a really hard time picking up hyped books, but um, I decided to do it and I'm so glad that I did. I read all three of the first books and then the fourth one comes out in 2024. My favorite of those three is Mixed Signals. This one is book number three. And I don't think anyone would be surprised that this one's my favorite because it deals with a lot of baking stuff. Our heroine's a baker and I was obsessed with her. <laughs> this one is about Layla and Caleb and they have the same exact problem, okay? They both live, well, they both live in this small town, but they have the same problem in life and that's dating. Like they're struggling really hard with dating and they kind of bump into each other one night in the next town over and Caleb gives Layla a ride home and they kind of talk about their struggles with dating right now. And they agree to kind of like fake date or date each other on like a trial basis to figure out like why they aren't with somebody. Like, can you tell me the reason why I don't have a girlfriend? Like, what am I doing wrong with dating? So I need you to date me to tell me what I need to fix with dating. <laughs> so this fake dating situation obviously sparks real feelings. Um, and the hero has been pining after her, honestly, for a very long time. <laughs> so um, he kind of sees this as the perfect excuse also to maybe like help Layla see like, oh, look, I'm right here. I'm right here, hello. <laughs> so um, this was really beautiful and sweet. I loved how dedicated this man was. So dedicated. There's one like scene one time in this book where all the power goes out at the heroine's bakery and she baked all these amazing big treats for a specific reason, like a very important like thing is coming up and she's like devastated. And the lengths that this man goes to, to make sure she has an amazing time and to make sure that everything is fixed like, I need that in my life. <laughs> like, I want my own Caleb. And also, he just says things to Layla that literally make me drool. Like, this man is everything. <laughs> the Plus One by Maisie Eddings was another one that I absolutely adore this year. I've talked about this one a bunch on my channel recently. This is the latest book in the A Brush With Love series by Maisie Eddings. I've read all three books in the series this year. This one is definitely my favorite. This one's about Indira and Jude. They grew up as like childhood rivals. They do not get along, but they have to be in forced proximity while they're both staying in the guest rooms at Indira's brother's house um, because Jude is her brother's best friend and he is in town for his wedding and he's gonna be there and be the best man and they have to share the guest rooms that are in her brother's house and they have so the rooms are right here and then there's an adjoining bathroom so forced proximity in that aspect okay mental health is heavily featured in this book so just please be aware of that jude has experienced quite a lot of traumatic things the only way he was able to afford to go to college was to um, become a doctor overseas for a certain number of years in countries that are experiencing a lot of war and a lot of crime and um, he's unfortunately lost more patients than he has saved them and it is affecting him like horribly like he does not want to go back like does not want to go back he doesn't know what to do and Indira is there to help him kind of along the way they don't really get along but they need to fake date because the man that Indira caught like the man was cheating on her this other guy was cheating on her her boyfriend and he's bringing somebody to the wedding and he the ex-boyfriend is a part of the wedding like he is one of the groomsmen and so uh judas accepted to be indira's fake date to kind of like make him jealous so like give him a little bit of his own medicine if you will so um and they end up falling for each other obviously i mainly love this one because of the mental health representation and the way that mental health is talked about in here 
I really, really, really appreciate it. And the last one that I have is Kissing Kosher by Jean Meltzer. This one was a recent read. I literally read this one like last week <laughs> and I need more people to read it. It's absolutely beautiful. This one's about Avital, who is the general manager and half owner of a Jewish bakery called Best Babka. She is dealing with a lot of chronic pain right now. She has a lot of chronic um, pelvic pain. I don't remember the exact condition that she has, but she is struggling really hard right now. Um, she's had to move back in with her parents because of her chronic illness. I can totally relate to that girl. Like that, there's so many things that I related to in this book and it's it's sad how much I related to her, I feel like. I feel like a lot of people can relate to Avital and the things that she's going through. If you also have um, chronic pain or chronic illness, like unfortunately there's a lot of things to relate to her and it sucks how relatable she is. Anyway, so she's really struggling right now with her chronic pain and just finding her purpose in life again after being diagnosed with her condition. And Ethan ends up showing up to Best Babka with an application in the hand to work there. And he ends up meeting Avital and kind of becoming very curious about her and figuring out about her chronic pain one day. And is gonna try everything possible to lessen her load and to make her life easier and less painful. And his caretaking in here, oh my gosh, if you don't know me, I am an absolute softy for a man who caretakes for their partner who is chronically ill or disabled. Like, oh my gosh, I'll become a puddle. Honestly, I eat that crap up like catnip. I'm obsessed with it. So, um, but there's also ulterior motives as to why Ethan wants to work at Best Babka and no one else knows those reasons. So I'll leave it there. I don't want to spoil anything, um, but I absolutely love this book so much. <laughs> It is like a new favorite of all time and I need more people to read it. Not a lot of people have read it, especially for chronic illness or disability or chronic pain of some sort. Like you will feel so seen when you read this book. Anyways, there you have it. Those are my top 10 favorite romances of the year. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and what are your favorite books of the year. I would love to know. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a star emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.